net out because these fish might be too big for without a net. He tore into my spinner bait. Muskohanna. Springtime. Smallmouth fishing. Wow. <laughs> That's a nice one. Oh yeah, 17, 16, maybe 18. How's it feel? <laughs> Feels like a big fat it mama feel? done it. That's a mama. I can't throw this fish. Come here, baby. Oh, look at that. Look at that smallmouth. Look at that. Look at that. That's, that's, that's an official Delaware River pig there. Oh my God, she's 19 easy. <laughs> Maybe more, it might be a 20. <coughs> she's not gonna make 20, she's gonna go 19 and, 19 and almost three quarter, Bob. <laughs> Whoa, that fish is heavy, son. Yes. Smallmouth fishing, springtime, Susquehanna River. I'm up here with Kirk Kirby, and we're going to tear him up. I hope it sure does look like it, doesn't Stay it? Stay tuned. It's going to be a good one. Yes, sir. <laughs> Fishing on the Susquehanna River, springtime, small mouse. I'm with my good fishing buddy, Kurt Kirby. Talks me into it again, coming out here to hammer these fish. <laughs> Couldn't help it. It is just, and the bad part was he calls it, he goes, I'll get one right there. Anyway, Kurt, what do we have out here? It's a little, little tougher conditions than we actually anticipated. Yeah, we're, uh, we're, fishing, we're fishing right after a major front came through. The water temperature dropped down. The water definitely has some color to it. We had two days of rain uh, in the northeast here. But uh, it should be, it should, if once you can get on the fish, they're hiding behind the points and the rocks and the ledges and stuff like that. Water temperature sitting around 46, 47 degrees. And we're, we're actually gonna be fishing pretty close to structure today. Yes, we're gonna be fishing points and, uh, and ledges. Because this is, well, middle of spring, middle of April, we're out here. Yes. And, uh, the fish are not spawning, not yet. They're getting ready to spawn, so they're kind of moving out of their, their winter areas, and then they're coming up into these little protected areas to, to sit and wait. Yeah. Judging by the way the temperature pattern has been lately, we're probably a week or two, maybe, or the next full moon is when I would expect to spawn. To spawn. You know, if the, if the water temperature gets up into the upper 50s, yeah. lower 60s, that kind of thing. And one of the things that you had mentioned that scares people as the water temperature, this is what, 40? Well, we're sitting in 47 degree water 47 right now. 47 degree water, and most people wouldn't be thinking about fishing in 47 degree no. water. No. That's the whole thing. They think that the water's definitely too cold yet. Yeah. No, these fish are feeding. They're getting ready to spawn. They're fattening themselves up. Yeah, that's good. Well, uh, let's get back up in there and uh, catch some more. Let's do it's that. Gonna be good. It's going to be good. We have an interesting pieces of structure right here. Usually on the uh, Susquehanna, you have ledges that go across the river. It's almost like a, se a series of steps. Right. But this piece of your structure that you have here, um, instead of going across the river, they're going up and down. How, what's this about? Well, I don't know how it formed this way. Who knows how many millions of years ago. Uh -huh. But it seems like this stretch here for maybe mile, two miles or so, there's a series of ledges that run all the way across the river, and like you said, they run up and down with the river as opposed to against it. You know, however granite or the stone is shaped through here over the years, 
I don't know what caused it, the current or whatnot, but it makes an interesting habitat. Gives the fish, they can, they actually run up with the current in between the ledges. Gives it like an underwater highway for them. And then, and then do you fish it any differently than you would that the structure going across yeah, the river? Yeah, yeah. A lot of times what I'm doing is I pull it across the top of these ledges and then let it drop right down along the side and it kind of, the current swoops down along the side with it and the fish may be tucked up tight against the side of the ledge and then it gives them the perfect advantage to, to come out and whack it. And then you can fish it from this side and then go around and then yep. fish it from the Both other side. side. Yep. Both sides. Now I'm throwing a spinnerbait and what I'm doing is throwing my bait up on the ledge, right. pulling it off and then just letting it flutter. Yes. And then you're, well, you're using a, a jerk bait there, but the, a tube would be perfect. Obviously we yep. throw a tube in here and then just pulling now it the, off. Now the downside to these ledges running this way is it makes it next to impossible, especially when the water is even up a little bit. You can't see them. You know what I mean? Right. You can't, when you're running up river, you but can't, it, there's it, no water disturbance. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, 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 it's right there. There's yeah. nothing there. Next thing you know, you're, you're out of water, zero water. And it's like a knife edge. And what we're, we're talking about is obviously we're in jet boats. And if you can't see that piece of structure, uh, you wind up on it. And yeah. this does have a tendency to really uh, slice oh, into you. Yes, versus they can. They can, open, they can open a boat right up, just like a can opener. Yeah, like bang it into it. Yeah. But it's really interesting structure though, not because I've been on the river a long time, but this is the first time I've ever seen this kind of thing. I guess you, go, you probably find patches of it up and down the river, but this is probably a new piece because everybody's used to, to getting it behind the ledge, yep. fishing above the ledge, below the ledge, you know, this way. But I mean, I'm, I, I don't, I won't say I cover all the whole Susquehanna River, but the sections that I have covered, this is the only area I've run into where it's this prevalent. You know, it's the whole, the whole area is the whole, as far as, you know, for a couple of miles here, this is the way oh, it is. Fact, where are we on the on the Susquehanna? We're actually in a town called Liverpool, probably about I don't know, 18, 20 miles north of Harrisburg. And one of the things that I, I do have to say out here, there are many access areas to get in into yep, the Susquehanna. You could fish this part, move down a couple of miles, and there's another yep. area so you can fish. So it's a, it's a really good spot to uh, to get into, which is which is a great. All, all fish commission accesses. There's, plenty, there's quite a few of them every, I don't know, probably every eight, 10 miles or so, yeah. there's a right. fish commission access. And the other part is, there's tons of structure to fish. <laughs> you can't find structure Never to any. fish on here. You couldn't possibly cover every bit of structure that's in here. You couldn't do it in a lifetime, let alone a day. Yeah. That's what makes it so interesting too, though. Everything changes now. Yeah. We're sitting out here fishing now, and we're fishing in well, water that has visibility down to, I don't know, four or five feet. It's nice, pretty green. Over there, 50 yards, it's running chocolate brown. Yeah, that's another interesting thing about the Susquehanna. You can find clear water, dirty water, yeah. within uh, <laughs> a couple of feet of each other. Yeah. We're murky, murky greenish brown, 50 yards that way. We're sitting in clear water, and 50 yards that way, it's uh, chocolate milk. Done. We've moved out basically into the middle of the river, would you say? We're in the middle of the river. And directly in the middle of the river. We've got clear water on, on each side of us here, and then we got muddy water on the far side. So what we're doing, right right in the middle here, and we're just throwing tubes up onto these um, little islands or current breaks. Yep. And uh, and then just have we're just drifting down with them. And uh, we don't have much water underneath us, but oops. Um, they just come into that, that little shallow part and then they run. Yeah, they run right alongside, right along the edges. Yeah. And what's happened, since we got on the water, what's the water temperature going up about, what, say four degrees? It's going up almost four degrees. Yeah. Almost, almost well, three, three and a half degrees since we've so been we're, on the we're water. back in these little, little cuts where the water will warm up a little bit better because it's slowed down. And we got, some, like, got a lot of beautiful structure and we're just pitching these tubes into these little areas. Come on. You were on, I yeah. missed it. I missed it. <laughs> I missed it. You do that? Yeah, maybe. 
Oh, yeah, baby. There you go, my friend. Thank you. Hey, yeah, nice one. Yep. 17. 16 and a half, 17. That's on the tube right off the point, just like we, just like the pattern's holding together. Look at, look at his belly. Look, look at that. that. Look Beautiful, how fat, silty belly. Fat belly. What we've done, we've just come through some of these cuts, and uh, we're just working behind these points where the water's a little slack. And at that point, I, I missed my fish, and <laughs> Kurt caught his. But, uh, Kurt, we have a little bit different kind of a water, water here because we have a, a little bit of silt, but yet we still have rocks with it. Is that the case? Yes, that's absolutely what the case is. Set of islands. This set of islands has a little bit of mud on them on each of the banks. Comes up in the shallow water to rocky start, and we're just coming down behind the points on each of them. Yeah, if you can imagine, right, right there is probably what, maybe a foot and a half, yeah. eight inches, right out there. And then we're just going to do these little cuts. This is perfect because the fish can come up onto these things if they want to feed, but yet they can go right down into these areas to, yep. to hang out. Get right down into the deeper water. Yeah. And like, like you had mentioned before, was that uh, Susquehanna is, is quite shallow. So on a, day, speaking, on a yep. day like today, uh, the water will warm up pretty quick. Yes, the sun's shining bright, especially with a little bit of color to it, a little bit of brown from the past rains and yeah. whatnot. Yeah, and all the rocks, it's gonna warm up real quick. We'll see a noticeable change in the water temperature as the day goes on. I wouldn't be a bit surprised she gets up into the 50s. I'm on. You're on, I yeah. missed it. That was the one I missed. A little bit smaller, but not just as nice. Got, got myself all miscombobulated here with the motor. Now hold that fish up. Let me get my, uh, get it. Figure out how he's hooked here. There you go. He's just a little, little, little piker. So that's a little. That's probably. You think that, that'd be a little male? Fish yes, it's probably a little male. But you know what the beauty of it is? Uh. is seeing them this small in the Susquehanna because of the, you know, the problems that the river has had over the years. Uh -huh. And this is really encouraging seeing him a nice, healthy fish. You know, 14 incher, 13 incher. That, that's. I, I don't mind catching these at all. It doesn't bother me one bit. I love seeing them. That just tells me, you know, the river's still, it's got its problems, but it's doing okay. We just caught that smaller fish, and you said you were real happy to see that, uh, that type of fish. Why is that? Most guys want to catch the big 19-inch the big, uh, fish. Sure, everybody but, does. That's what, that's what everybody wants to catch is the big ones. But this river has been, over the years, has had some reported problems with it, with a columnaris outbreak that's a uh, low oxygen it's a, it's a disease in the river the fish are stressed and it affected a lot of the young of the year fish from a good many spawns and i'm not just talking one or two spawns like a lot of spawns and uh, so the the numbers of the small fish are really declining in the river and uh, what that's going to do is it's going to eventually the big fish are going to either be caught or die off right. or, and if there's no small fish to take their place then basically the river, you know, the fishery really declines. Mm -hmm. So it's nice seeing the small fish. I have absolutely no problem seeing a few of them. Nice, healthy, small fish. Plus you had young of the year floods right in the middle of the spawn. How many back-to-back -back hundred year floods did we have? I think we had two or three of them, right, didn't we? Right. You know, six, eight years ago. And uh, they, they, they know they wiped out spawns. So yeah, it's encouraging seeing the, seeing the little guys. You got one, don't you, Bob? No, I just got a little yeah. junk. <laughs> junk. Actually, it was a rock. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice rock, though. Another little guy, another little guy, which is okay. Oh, he wanted to jump. Yeah. Another little guy, that's nice, another little male. That's beautiful, that's beautiful. That's beauteous, thank you. Now, they, now we're, we're fishing this little cut, or are they coming off of the, like we see, I can see another ledge out there. Right, they're coming, on, they're coming on the other side of it. Other side of the ledge? Yeah, just, just on the other down. side, just on the other side of the point, on, uh -huh. the, on the far side of the mm -hmm. point. Uh, 
right out in that area there. Oh, we're going to have a tree out here in the middle of nowhere, mm -hmm. away from the island. Mm -hmm. And I can see just on the other side there, there's a ledge that's running down alongside of it. And it's creating a nice little backwater area. The river's coming up a little bit, it's still coming up, and it's creating a little backwater eddy kind of effect. Mm -hmm. And it's so definitely. We'll fish behind we're it. going to fish behind it. We're going to come down behind it and toss up into the eddy right alongside the ledge, and hopefully somebody will be sitting right down along the side there. Because they'll still, ready well, to, they've been sitting off the back of the islands. They've been sitting back behind the island. Basically, islands. you can say this is almost a mini island in yep. a sense, but it's, 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 it's an a little, it's, All it is is just an isolated piece right out here in the middle of, basically in the middle of nowhere. River's full of them. You have to river up a little bit, and uh, it's creating a nice little backwater area where they can kick back, relax. You know, they can ambush anything coming down along the current seams. Yeah, you can see the both sides of it. Right. It's actually a pretty structure. It looks like fish central to me. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait till I can clear this little branch right. right here. If you throw it in there and you get hung up, and that's the end of that. Right. Plus, you don't want to set your hook on a, on a tree branch. And you just toss Junior right down in there. and uh, Just like got him. Decent fish? Yep, this is a decent one. Not bad. None of them are bad. No. Yeah. That's a nice chunky yeah, fish. Yeah, look at how like fat her belly is. Yeah. Young one, but yeah, her belly's good, nice and fat. Now what we what we did here, that we were fishing the islands in the back islands, but we have we, a nice slated piece of structure that gave us a little bit of a, a current break. Yep. Got it in right alongside the current break, right alongside the current seam. Yep, and I got a snag. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you want to look at here. You can see we have we have the tree in front of us, and then on each side we got a line and a line here, and right in between is that back eddy, and those fish are just going to lay in that eddy and w wait for anything to wash down. And what Kurt did, he threw it right up there and brought his bait down just like it would be a natural a natural flow and boom. I also see a I see the ledge I see a vertical ledge mm -hmm. of, of running with the river a horizontal ledge I guess you call it mm -hmm. right down inside there and that's creating this and with the breakwater right there this is fish central <laughs> fish central exactly <laughs> When they get out in that current, and they... <laughs> oh, nice look at fish. that one. That's a nice one. That's a nice fish. There's a beauty. I'm coming. <laughs> I'm a coming. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, the one will go around. Ooh. My <laughs> mistake. Where is that dog? He's over here. Sorry. Wow, he's a beauty. <laughs> you see the color of this rascal. Look at this. This is a pretty fish. It's a bruiser, too. Yeah, come here. Come on. Get over here. There we got go. him. Oh, man, look at this. Look at, look at the <laughs> belly on this rascal. <laughs> that fish got to go Jenny Craig, man. Yeah, look at that. Here you go, Bob. All right, thanks, brother. Nice fish. Ooh, look at the size of that fish. How thick it is, though. That's amazing. Now, Kurt, let's just talk a little bit. We're hitting these isolated points again, but one thing that you, we haven't mentioned is how much crayfish are in this <coughs> body of water. <laughs> it's, it's unimaginable right. how many there are. It's yeah. unimaginable. Look at the belly on this fish. Right now, her belly, I can assure you, is full of crayfish. Oh, look at that. Look at that. I <laughs> see that. Look at that. Look at that fish. That look down coming. in her gullet. You see anything sticking out of her gullet, maybe? No, just my tube. Boy, that's a beautiful fish. Yeah, that's a beauty. That one's, that one's probably approaching three pounds. Yeah. Look at that. And you know what? We always talk about the color of these fish in the sunshine is just... Unbelievable. Oh, They're just like this gold and the bronze, green. Whew. Is that a healthy specimen there or what? <laughs> Man. Oh. Oh. Getting hot and heavy here. 
Bring that little doggy around here. Yeah. If you can. <laughs> oh, I can hardly lift it. <laughs> There's a chunkster. Look at that. Look at that. Look at the belly on that thing. Can you climb? Nope. There you go. Look at that. Is that a healthy bass? Is that a healthy smallmouth bass there? Now she's only going to go 16 and a half, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Look, look. How, look, how, look, how, look how fat she is. Look how wide she is. Like a football. Yeah. Yeah. Is that pretty? Yeah. Look at that. Look at that in the sunshine. The red eye. Yeah. See you, darling. Thank you. We're catching them off of these points. And again, we have um, a condition where the water muddied up a little bit more, but yet the, the fish are still actively feeding. Yep. And again, we're, we're throwing those tubes. And one of the things that uh, Kurt had mentioned, which is important, we're not, we're not, I don't know how you, we're dragging the tubes versus actually swimming the tubes. No, we're actually letting the, letting the current push the tube down alongside the, alongside the point and just keeping a tight line on it. You can feel it bouncing along the bottom. Mm -hmm. I'm not lifting it up, I'm not, I'm not, not jig fishing. Right. You know, just kind of letting it, it drag along the bottom and the fish are swimming up along there and they see that and they think it's a crayfish probably. Right. And boom, and they, they latch yeah. onto it. Well, let's go back and do that again. Yeah, one more time. There you go. Mm, that's a piggly. There we go. Nice fish. Right off of that point. Yep. Right? I mean, literally, I mean, you can't maybe what, a foot in front of it or something? A foot in front of the point, maybe. Yeah. Look at that belly on that fish. Jeez. Look, look right? at the bronze colors in her. Yeah. Off the tube again. Off the tube. Give that dog a kiss. Oh. Gotta love it. I love Susquehanna River smallmouth. I, <laughs> I, I do. I just, I can't help it. Let's see. Well, when you catch fish like that all day long, you gotta like it. Oh. And again, we're just fishing these isolated points off of these isolated islands. Yep. That's yep. all it is. And we're not fishing literally six feet. Now, the only thing that we, we have been uh, noticing is that we've been catching them on the current side. Yep, it's been of, on the current. The it's been on the current side of, on of the, the current side of the, of the island. Islands. So you can you can see the current coming down there, and they're on the current side of the island, not on the inside of it, but they're on the current side. And again, just flipping it up into there and just letting it just move on down. You know, when you cast in there, I, said, I just didn't had that feeling there was going to be a fish up in there. That was the one I had. <laughs> oh, here's me. Oh, look at that little doggy. Man, fat fish. Bob, feel the weight on this one. Oh, my God. This fish here. I don't know, what do you think, 16, maybe no, he's 17? probably closer to 17. Is 17? Okay, I'll yeah. go 17. <laughs> it looks like we stuck sinkers in its belly I'm or something. I'm telling you. you know this, heavy is? this fish is just so fat. If you can see that belly on it, it is just unbelievable. Let me just put this down here. And we're talking just, oh, 17. So, got a good eye, Kirk, right there. 17-inch Susquehanna. Springtime, smallmouth. I love it. I'll give you a kiss, sweetheart. Oh. Well, I don't know. This one is going down. Oh, yeah. He's a nice one. I'll bring it around this way. All right, you want to go this way? Go this way. Spunky little rascal. Yeah. And the other thing that I like with these, these light rods, you know, you can get away with it pretty much. Yeah. Oh. The rod's playing the fish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. 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 I
nice looking fish. Stay away from that aluminum boat. Oh, he's got be just beautiful colors is what he is. Oh my goodness. Wow. Look at that. Isn't that? I like the, 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 the combination with that red eye because they get you know, that yeah. funky. And then that thing. Wow. Nice fat fish. That streamlines that thing. Look at that. Let's take a quick measurement of her. And she's gonna pump. She's gonna pump 17 just over. <laughs> well done, Bob. Yeah. Nice fish. Yeah. Look, look how pretty that bronze yeah. coloring is. And the sunshine with the colors. Uh, how healthy they are too. Uh, you know, it's just gorgeous. See you, bud. And now, for a closer look at today's tackle, Delaware Valley Outdoors presents The Tackle Box. For more information about the tackle used on today's show, go to DelawareValleyOutdoors.com. Okay, we're here with the Tackle Box section of the, the show, and we're, we were struck with probably two baits today, but there's lots more baits that you can use up here. We ran into a situation today where uh, last week you were here and the water was clear. This week we're back and we had some, some muddy water. But the bait that you said you were really, really catching them on was this bait here. What, what bait do I have here? That's a Lucky Craft Pointer 100. It's a AYU color, AU color. Uh huh. Very and again, popular color. It's a suspending jerk bait. Suspending jerk bait. And that, that's been doing really good now. The time of the year? early spring mm -hmm. before the water gets too warm and it'll, it'll work even in a warm water also but I just find that they, they key more on that in a colder water mm -hmm. and then and clearer water when the water's clear yeah when it's clear now, the baits that I always like and you always like obviously are spinner baits now this is your this one of your favorite colors for up here what do we yeah. have here that's called a mouse color that's a war eagle spinner bait tandem willow spinner bait half ounce size and do you like the heavier the half ounce size versus quarter three ace or yes you like the half ounce the half ounce because it's dropping over top of the ledges and you can let it helicopter down the ledge and you that can kind control of thing. you can control a little bit more the current's moving out there the current's pretty. moving you got to be able to feel it spinning so that that half ounce really it gets it down deeper in the water column mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. again springtime or you can use this all summer too i'm sure but yes but that's that's mid spring to late spring into early summer when they're keen on the bait fish or reaction bites the water's a little warmer now this bait, I have to. <laughs> big fish of the day, Bob. Took the big fish of this day on my spinner bait. Nineteen, while we were, 19 and a half inches. <laughs> while we were coming up, we were talking about this, and I said, "How about throwing a spinner bait?" And you said, "Well, depends on the water temperature a little bit." And so I had this, and we had a lot of muddy conditions. And from the fishing on the Delaware that you and I do, I know that we get a little bit of muddy conditions. I'm going to show throw a chartreuse bait, and it caught the biggest. Fish. And I lost another big fish yeah, on it. Big one on also. But this is a great color, especially in this this muddy, stained water. Uh, I do like that, and I do like the, the. In fact, I would even have a bigger Colorado blade on this because Bumper. I like that big that big wake that it's going to make. Yep. But this will do do some damage. All right, we got to go to the tubes. <laughs> All right, tube you have here. That's a Strike King uh, green pumpkin with blue tails on it. Now, why do you like it with the blue tail? Well, I we caught a couple of crayfish up here, and their, their uh, pinchers on them were like a real brilliant blue. And I was like, so I was looking for anything I could find that had blue tails on it. And you had mentioned too that even now, which is the water's still cold, it was 40 some degrees when we started this morning, right. that you're finding crayfish coming out already. That's, yes. Yeah. Yep. Got a couple last week. Yep. Caught a couple. And then the usual suspect. <laughs> What do we have here? That's a, that's a green pumpkin goby with a chartreuse tip tails on it. The muddier water, the brighter green, you know, it gets it's just a different different uh, look to it. And one, one of the things that today, that you had you had a fish actually hold on to the tail of this thing, yes. bring it yes. in. Yep. And they, now how, how would we work these again? On the ledges? What, 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 what I'm doing with those use? is we're, today we're hitting the points and what I was doing, we were throwing out into the current and letting the current 
kind of wash it down along the bottom. We were keeping the lines tight enough just to feel the tube bouncing along the bottom all the way down, not lifting it up, not jerk, uh, right. not, not jig fishing it. And the fish were, you know, scooting along the point edges and they were coming up and grabbing it as it was bouncing down along the bottom. Now, as far as, as fish or... rods go, what test line and what size rods do you recommend? This is not real heavy, heavy fishing up here, but still you need something that'll... You gotta have, it's gotta have a little bit of stout to it. You know, these fish are big, they're fat. Yeah. And you know, the current's moving out there and you're... Uh, so I'm using basically six foot six rods, graphite rods, all graphite rods, six to eight pound test uh, fire lines, what I'm using. Mm -hmm. Mono, you could go up to 10 pound test uh, without a problem. And the fire line just gives me a better feel for the bottom. I can feel every little... Yeah. And with the fire line, you can get some of those tubes out. <laughs> you, can, you can pull some <laughs> like, of them out. We snag, you, get, you get snagged up a lot. Yeah. You're, you're not losing tubes, you're not in the right spot. Right. Plain exactly. and simple. Well, the other thing that I have to say is we got the best boat going around here. And you need a jet boat up here, obviously. Right. Um, and one of the things that um, I, you have on your boat, and just, just quickly talk about it, is the bottom that you have on this. That is amazing that we can just pull right up on the, on the ramp and not even hurt anything. What it is has that? a UHMW bottom. It's an ultra-high molecular weight polyethylene, three-quarter inch thick. It makes it basically rock-proof. Is it, is it fail-safe? No, it's not fail-safe. But you can, it can withstand impacts to the bottom of the boat and rubbing and bumping. And, the ledges that we had out here, they're 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 running with the river. You can't see them. Right. You'll slide right up on it. It'll open up a boat in a minute. Right. Without this protection on there, you, right. you have you'd be in trouble. You could be in trouble. So if you get a chance, I'm out here in the springtime for my favorite kind of thing, smallmouth springtime Susquehanna, and that's the tackle box. Kurt, I want to thank you an awful lot for inviting me up for smallmouth, springtime, Susquehanna fishing. Hey, I'm Bob Murray. Go to our website, Delaware Valley Outdoors. We can see more pictures of Kurt catching fish. We got all kinds of uh, things up there for you. We got the, the, the tides. We got everything for you. You'll love it. Hey, I'm Bob Murray. I'll see you on the water. Good fish, my friend. Thank you. Thank you.